there'd be a lot of poop in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing a six foot alligator go swing into the air and slam into a tree. These guys are the scientists of the supernatural, lecturers leaving lessons for inquiring laymen. They are applying the scientific method to a world that baffles science. They are the cryptids of the corn. But who else has big black wings and red eyes? Um, Batman. Oh, Mothman. Oh yeah, Mothman. A great white shark was stolen. Oh, someone stole a shark? I got stuff for you you don't even know about. She's a witch. She turned me into a newt. Who knows? Anything could be possible. Anything could be possible. It's really big Mm -hmm. abduction vibes. Holy moly. It sounds like you were abducted. And it just stood up. I mean, it just like kept going and going. And she goes, what the... What are you laughing at? <laughs> Welcome back. I'm the great and powerful Mr. E. I am Jay Clone. Uh, what's today? <laughs> season finale. Oh, oh part season, five. Season. Oh, I'm Jay Clone five. There you go. Uh, so real quick, top of the episode. What was the name of the town I've been pronouncing wrong for four hour, five hours? Well, the one you, you've been calling it, Duchess County, Duchess. It's Duche. Duchesne. Duchesne. Yeah, Duchesne County. Now, I swear, somebody on one of the TV shows or one of the documentaries called it Duchess County. I'm going to try to pull it up, and if... Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not going to try to insert a clip. I'm, that's a lie. That's above my skills. <laughs> well, we know how uh, accurate and good that show is, so... They may I, know, have, they I, may I don't have think it, it was that show. I think it was one of the things I watched on the Sherman Ranch. Oh, gotcha. But that was the closest town to them. Well, so, you know, just like, you know, some people make mistakes. I'm just saying... Uh, as we know with the Chicago Mothman series, I will say every na- name of every major town wrong. Vernal, I do know because it's spelled just like Vernapool. Yes. And I worked where, with them a lot. Where the fairy shrimp live. Where the fairy shrimp live. Did I ever say I'm the great powerful mystery in your J. Clone 5? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Season finale four, part five. What is happening? Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed this. This is a whole different style of doing these. Um, in my personal opinion, I think every season finale has had a different style. Probably. At least, you know, very... Uh, I think the people in the triangle was much... Uh, the Mothman was very story-oriented. Thorough. And, well, they're all thorough. That's the point. True. Yeah. But the the Bermuda Triangle was very story-oriented because we went kind of through time with that one. Right. Uh, but yeah, this one's just kind of everything. What was season three? We did. Mothman, Loch Ness, Bermuda Triangle. Oh, that was and it. Okay. The Uinta Basin. Okay. So what's happening? This is another weird one. Uh, I just want to say I'm not a religious expert for any other religions besides my own. Uh, I'm not a folklore expert. Uh, so when we start blaming things or possible blames, I don't know. I just, just want to say that. We're just throwing whatever against the wall and seeing what sticks. Here's my... So I got a list of them for you. And then I have a twist at the end. I'm just letting you Ooh, know. Ooh, a, a list twisted. and a twist? A list and a twist. Uh, we're just going to go through and talk about them because... There is evidence for probably all of these. Okay. Uh, and I don't know if it's all of them, a single one, a couple of them, you know, whatever. It's all of them. <laughs> the first one is a psychological test and or studying the phenomena reacting with humans. So I was watching the show Project Blue Book. Okay. And they did the they did the Sherman Ranch. And, you know, it's obviously the TV show is much different than a lot of the stuff actually happened in real life. Right. Um, but, the you know, they had only had one kid and it was dealing with the skinwalker. Anyways, the end of that show. So, spoiler alert, it's been out for a couple years. But it's uh, it's a really cool show. The Hopkinsville Goblin episode is the worst one in my opinion. But the rest of them are pretty, are pretty fair. That's the one they'll avoid. Yeah. It made me actually upset. <laughs> uh, anyways. So, they what they were, what was happening was they found out this. So the Shermans are getting tortured okay. by these skinwalkers, which we know in the real story happened. Right. Whatever entities they were dealing with, I know they didn't really talk super hard about a lot of the entities trying to come to the houses at night for whatever reason. That's the one of the few things they didn't really talk about publicly. 
is what these entities look like. With the things trying to get into the house at night and stuff like that. Why they were, everything had locks and boards and, you know, all that stuff. Right. And they, you know, the house had them beforehand. But then, they, you know, they definitely, they took them off and then they put them back on. For reasons. Uh, so what may be happening here is that this, the government understands, and I'm talking U.S. government. I'm not talking about a military soldier, man, or woman, or anything like that. We respect our personnel in the military. I'm talking about the military industrial complex. Right. Does not care about humans. No, not at all. Uh, listen to DW's show on times the government has screwed over people. Yeah. Plenty. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. answer. So what it may be happening here is the phenomena was recognized early on in like the 40s. Uh, so the phenomena was there. Uh, the locks, the first family that owned the quote unquote ranch that yeah. actually talked about a bunch of the stories that said, you know, the man came out of the desert and said, don't dig. Yeah. The man in the suit came out of the desert and so said, don't dig. You think government? Maybe. Maybe. Because the base, we put a base under the ground. So don't dig because you're going to get into uh. our office space. <laughs> but fall through the drop. That's ceiling. what happened in the TV show. The whole underground, like the whole basin was hollow for all the government labs. And they were studying the phenomena happening above all the ghosts, so the ghost, the paranormal, the UFOs is all real, including the skinwalkers. And they had basically the skinwalkers were also using the tunnels underground and they would just close off sections, like forcing the skinwalkers to go to certain residences. Okay. To study how they react. Okay. So it's like a big control lab. Right. And that's what, you know, they talk about in the basin and all this stuff is they, oh, a bunch of people believe in the Mesa. There is a, a military base. I couldn't find a lot of white people think that, but a lot of people think there's a military base. And I wonder it's because guys in suits walk out of the desert to tell you not up. to dig. Yeah. And then because other people had had that happen in the area. Right. Um, I mean, but hmm. I mean, I don't So discu- I'm not discounting any of the phenomena. Right. No, no, no. Yeah. What I'm saying is why it got so intense later on is because they were. They they're poking the hornets hornet's nest. Yes, and letting letting the people on the surface deal with it. Right. Yeah. To really study. Or they they were basically in control of when the phenomena were happening or and so turning back, it up or down. Yeah. With NIDS, they let Bigelow move in. Bigelow had a lot of government ch- contracts before and a lot more after. They let Bigelow move in with his NIDS team. Once NIDS started getting actual credible data. Yeah. Like okay okay okay. They fired all the NIDS people. The government's like, hey, Bigelow, we are, we've been under your feet the whole time. We were seeing how your scientists would deal with this phenomena. You got to some answers that maybe we couldn't get to. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's move on together. Yeah. He got some government contracts, and then they sold the ranch <sighs> to the next unsuspecting group. Yeah. So in, my, in that kind of thought, Bigelow maybe didn't know what was happening beforehand. That story we talked about Bigelow three or four episodes ago yeah. may have been real, that he was really actually actively looking for a place like this with a general – interest seeking answers yeah yeah and then once he got a couple you know these government entities swoop in and we're like okay it's our turn now well no we want to, we want to do this with you. with yes exactly but what they that's, really mean is that's the only option you get yeah even for a billionaire like bigelow you don't that's the option you just still don't mess with big brother so that they are torturing these people they are you know these people are getting sick these people are getting you know we talked about the cancer rate at the end of last or two right. episodes ago these people right. are, you know, poor and sick and, you know, just being experimented on, which, what do we talk about? The government loves experimenting on poor people and, 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 and minorities. Yes. Especially of its own citizens. Yeah. Especially if they're not white. Oh, uh, yeah. When we, you know, with the DW did that episode, most of the experiments what was were that? on, uh, it's, the government wouldn't do that, would they, is the name of the episode. But what was that one experiment? The Tuskegee experiments? Tuskegee, yes. Uh, where they gave everybody cancer yeah. and were like... Uh, or here's... syphilis or something? No, was it? No. What was the one where they... they? There was a bunch. There was a bunch of horrific yes. diseases they yeah. gave to people and gave $400. And then they promised uh, their families... Uh, well, they told, Half of them they didn't ever tell. No. Yeah, half, uh, It's just awful. The government's... The U.S. industrial complex is just awful. Mm-hmm. So here's that kind of first thought. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm not. I would never put it past them to have a uh, underground facility. That was scary. What? Did you see that? I just seen your face. A uh, bird just hit the, the side of the house. Oh, is that what that ding was? Yeah. Okay. No, I just. I, just... I think we said the word skinwalker too many times today. Mm. 
That's kind of yeah. I guess we shouldn't. We should listen to the old ladies and the stories that. Oh, there's a whole bunch of birds. Warn of saying these things. That, okay, I may but, have to go outside and cleanse the house with fire. Yes, after this episode, perhaps it may be necessary. But I, I'd never put it past the government to have their own secret base or underground because they're freaking everywhere. We have ba- over 800, almost 900 bases worldwide that we know of, military bases. So to have one in your own country with an unlimited budget, because we don't know where our tax dollars are going. They could be building this there, doing whatever experiments they want to do. Um, you know, it's, I, I, I wouldn't put it past them. Now, whether they're controlling these entities, you know, using them, uh, or what if they're creating them? If it is an underground base, what if some of these entities aren't even real and they're just like projections that they're projecting from underneath the now, ground? I, I did have Project Bluebeam kind of stuff. And, it's also on the list. Okay. So, but no, that is also on the list. Personally, I don't buy the Project Bluebeam thing in this aspect at all because of how long it's been going been on. Seen. Yeah. You know, talking 1800s. Yeah. When the Utes and the Navajo were fighting. <laughs> But they could have, like, they could, like you said, they knew this phenomenon was going on there, and then they took advantage of it, figured it out, and now they're doing their reverse engineering it and using their own test to project their own phenomena onto people and seeing how they react. It could be. Maybe they're, and now maybe they're doing this to other places around the country, around the globe, and could explain some, like, Oh, maybe perhaps explain some aliens that showed up in a Miami mall, allegedly. Like, what if it's the same phenomena? They could just be projecting creatures while they're doing awful things elsewhere. Uh, I think by the end of this, I don't think you'll think that. Okay. But it's just Uh, a what if. I have the twist. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the twist. We're still on the list. Yeah, we're still on the list. The twist comes later. Uh, So, psychological experiments studying the phenomena in in conjunction. They're, they're doing the same thing. They're yeah. testing humans, using humans as test. You know, what Bigelow did on the ranch was use animals as yeah. test subjects. And what may have been happening in my mind is that the government was using them as test subjects. The people. Yeah. Because uh, at the end of it, one of the Bigelow researchers, one of the ones that spoke, would talk that it was definitely an intelligent entity. Whatever the ranch was, whatever they were dealing with during research, yeah. was screwing with them. It's like it's well, I don't you they didn't you know he didn't say it was a demon or an alien or an interventional creature. He said it was intelligent and it knew it was screwing with them. Yeah, and because he's we'd set up these experiments because we they'd give us some piece of data we could track finally, and then we'd set up all the experiments and they'd never do it again. Yeah, so it knew what it was just you know torturing us. Hmm. So I I could see that one a lot, but all of these like I said all of these are, you know, possible. Yeah, there's a sliver of chance in each of them that was my foot i think oh i'm getting freaked out by all the birds attacking the house yeah any weird noises setting you off uh next one uh protecting a nuclear dumping site oh wait before i go on to that keep mind i just said nuclear dumping site we'll come back to nuclear dumping site okay uh i do want to say bigelow's team a lot of his team that did come before and speak about it talked about the mesa had a cave in it right now the skinwalker tv show it definitely does not have a cave they found like you know, if, you know, there's this show. It's it's mostly mumbo jumbo. They never mention a cave there. No, they think there was one, but there's they had an expert, quote unquote, expert come on and say this was a controlled demolition. There's a landslide where exactly where a lot of these guys were saying the cave was in the mesa. Huh. So I kind of wonder if that was how the government was getting in there and dug out. Hmm. Just uh, just a thought. All right, next one. Uh, protecting a nuclear dumping site. Okay. They used to dig giant holes out in the desert and just dump and dump bad stuff in the ground. Like we said, the cancer rate in the Uensa Basin is a lot higher than other places. Ooh, okay. And I wonder if they are portraying all of this uh, mumbo jumbo in this part of this thing, like the skinwalkers, the UFOs, to cover up and blame, shift blame, so people don't look into. The radioactive watershed. Hmm. And that's why cows have tongues that rot off and explode. And ears that fall off. Yeah. And- but I don't know. It's just somebody, it's not my main thought, but somebody out there was sharing this and had, you know, was talking about that the government had done this to other small cities in the uh, the Southwest. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That oh, they for would, sure. Basically, if it had a, it was big enough to have a gas station, they would do, drink a hole out there somewhere and just dump all the nuclear waste. I wonder if, uh, well, do we know any water quality 
uh, surveyors out in that area? No, they're all dead. Hmm. From cancer. From, it actually is from cancer. Radio, I, no, but it would be interesting, though, if we get a I couldn't result. find any water quality surveys. I'm sure there are in yeah. the area. Uh, I couldn't find any. Hmm. Just a thought. Fishy. You Not couldn't. my main thought, but... Yeah. But it would be inter- it would be an interesting, uh, uh, I don't know, to see the results of what the water quality is around that area, especially if some of it does test, like the Ohio River. Oh, yeah. Really radioactive. Yeah. Okay. Next one. That's the tornado siren. Oh, Snoozy. gosh. Now it's every noise is scaring me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next one. This is the actual path of the skinwalker. Okay. The, the curse that the Navajo put on the Utes is 100% real. Uh, and as fully as they believe that there are actual flesh and blood or magical skinwalkers living out their numbers. Uh, the curse is, kind of, like I said, extremely, <sighs> you got to buy the beer. Yep, you're right. I don't know. You do it every time. I don't know why it's a surprise anymore. I don't know. I was sitting on it, too. Anyways, the Utes don't talk about it a lot, but some of the people I found talked that they basically made a deal with the skinwalkers to inhabit this area and as retribution. Okay. And we talked about Bottle Hollow and these ridges, the Dark Hollow. They think that's where the skinwalkers all live and come out and torture everybody. Yeah. So what if that's really what's happening? All the UFOs, all the poltergeist-like activity, the, all the giant animals and creatures being seen are all the skinwalkers, which would fit in their mythos. Even the UFO stuff? I, the orbs light is a big thing in a lot of Native American legends. Like I said, the, skin, the Navajo do not yeah. talk very much about their legends, especially the, the their skin changers. Right, I yeah. changed the word for you. There we go. Uh, no more birds in the backyard. They stopped. It probably was one of the quail, now that I think about it. <laughs> what? that? Maybe a skinwalker turned into a quail. Because my quail don't fly very well. Oh, like it's it's trying to get on the roof and just hit the side of the house. It escaped and just flew right into the house and knocked itself There's out. one loose that's been loose out there for like a month. Yeah. Well, he's finding a way. Anyway, so what if it's that? What if it's this? it actually is the path of the skinwalker and all of this is that legend? Well, I wouldn't say... I would say it's very possible, but I wouldn't say all of this is that legend. What would you point to that's not? I just think a lot of the, like the different types of UFO activity and different types of UFO, the, um, that would be my biggest indicator that's not all of it is that. But, um, you know, with a lot of the different animals and creatures and like the guy running at speed with that alongside that bus, like that's Skinwalker, like had, you know, had all the way down from head to toe. I mean, so is the pale crawlers and the Bigfoot-like things. Yeah. And maybe even the giant manta rays are actually uh, the next evolutionary step in skinwalkers. <laughs> they get, they do land, sea, and air. Boy, we guess not sea, but... Yeah, I don't know. I think a lot of it do. I think you could cut the UFOs into the skinwalker legend. I don't know, though. The right. Navajo don't talk about it. Right, yeah. We've never had, as far as I can find in my research, I've never had a Navajo chieftain... Or a Navajo medicine man actually come out and like here's the rules, but they know them. I'm not. I'm not saying that's unknown knowledge. They have. I'm sh- know that Navajo do have that. Right. Yeah. They just don't tell talk, anybody about don't it. Don't talk too much about it. Because they were tried. Uh, people tried to wipe them out. Right. Well, they pretty much did. Pretty much did. Yeah. Or, yeah. Anyways, so you're going yay or nay on path of the Skinwalker? I mean, I think yeah. I think yes, but not entirely. I think the whole ph- phenomenon on a whole is a hodgepodge of things, but I think this, yeah, sure, this could be definitely one of them. A portal area is causing all this phenomena, and this portal could be due to, so the magnetic and gravitational anomalies is our, one of our thoughts. A couple of the others I've seen pushed forward to the portal area is rituals, ancient rituals causing this. That could be in Path of Skinwalker uh, or anything like that. Government experiments. Or it's just one of these things that we've talked about when we talked about portals before. They're just kind of natural. They just kind of pop up in spots in the earth, and the areas around them get weird. Right. Like we talked about with the geology of the area, if it is just a weird area, or if it was like, what did we did we say ancient? Like could have been like a volcano at one point, or just a uh, a thin spot. That's how they were. One of the interpretations of data for the magnetic anomalies. Yeah. The supersized magnetic anomalies. Yeah. Right. Was a light material, a giant pouring of light material from inside the Earth's mantle, had it worked its way up. 
So not a volcano, but maybe a pseudo volcano or something like that. So, right. Not geologist. Something something not typical of. I don't know basic geology you, you normally run across. I, I don't know. I, and I think it could be something that we don't understand. Yeah. Whether it, it's an ancient, like maybe a new material deposit. Yeah. Some kind of or quartz. Heck, it could just be a whole big pile of quartz. We know quartz make things weird. Absolutely. Uh, so that's the one is gravitational magnetic anomalies is causing it. Uh, government, Stranger Things. Right. Experiments. Is, I kind of lump that in with pre-existing because we talked about that with Point Pleasant and some other locations. Right, they uh, picked a they picked a location that already had a had weak, some weird spots. Yeah, a and weak then fail. They opened it, like, like Stranger Things, like peeling a scab open, and then stuff just pours out. Yep, which I get it. You know, you ever just been scratching your head, you find a scab, and you're like, ooh. Well, most of us aren't. Most of us can't aren't. just work our scalps like that. Oh, okay. Most of us ain't bald. I haven't seen my scalp, and I can't tell you how many years. I see mine every day, every single day. I see yours about every day. Well, yeah. Most people that see me do. Uh, so, and then rituals. Like, we don't know. That kind of falls into the path of the Skinwalker causes thing. And the portal may be to wherever Skinwalkers are from. Or they make them. I don't know. Gotcha. So, yeah or nay on that one? I mean, like I said, uh, could be part of the phenomena, but not entirely sold on it completely. All right. Next one. Aliens. I just felt like when you said that, I immediately think Giorgio Sukulos. Sukulos. Aliens. Well, now looking at this, all the evidence combined, ancient could ancient astronauts be responsible for the Uinta Basin phenomena? The answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> just, I don't know why it made me laugh, just the way you did it. Because that's how they do it on every episode of that show. Are ancient astronauts responsible for so and so? And immediately followed up. The answer is yes. Every time. So let me every let, time. Let me finish my spiel. Uh, aliens. This is a part of the Eisenhower Agreement where they are allowed to abduct humans and animals for harvesting. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. There's a lot of yeah. So is this what's happening here? This is one of these whether it's interdimensional aliens or yeah. actual galactic aliens. I don't know. I don't care. Right. Yeah. Uh. But these these beings from somewhere else, this is one of the areas. Some of the either the world government or the U.S. government has allowed them to just destroy people and animals. Right, probably because they've made deals with whatever these beings are and don't care about regular everyday people. Because maybe the people in government that made these deals with these beings feel extra special because they're in contact with these beings, so they don't care if they come in and slaughter, murder abduct torture us because this is there's a lot of torture out here you know psychological and physical yeah like i said you know people are dying of cancer left and right i mean fear is the big thing was that me yes you dropped your phone and it's on season finale i wonder if it could turn on when i dropped it that's weird don't drop your phone again i will be upset uh so i don't know what what aliens destroying people and cows and that literally they're just you know they suck the one cow up off the Sherman Ranch or the trees. Yeah, yeah. They are the cows being destroyed. Why people are in the pasture with them? Yeah. Um. Well, I'm gonna say yes, but not to for like the typical alien from out outer space point of view. I do think whatever aliens are are uh, created biological beings, and I think what whatever. Uh, is creating them or is control them is probably the uh, the beings or entities behind you know the new world order push you know for the one world government and the enslavement of humanity. They may be like all the same entity. So if uh, they're capable, I think they're very much capable of doing something like this. So yeah, I could say that this could be them if they're the aliens. Sure, yes, 100%. I would make this a big part of the pie, so hmm. to speak. Hmm. Yeah, I, I could see it. <laughs> Next one I have, Mormons. Ah, this the is real a, culprit. This is not my thoughts. Uh, I know nothing of Mormonism. Me either. I wish I did for this topic, but I don't know nothing. I, somebody was talking about that uh, Mormons actually 
worship in like they don't know they're worshiping an ancient deity. That's like I said once again, not my topic. I was just listening to a uh, podcast kind of explain it. Yeah, she was an ex Mormon uh, that was explaining it. You know, once uh, Brigham Young's mother was connected to a lot of satanic groups. Okay, and that I guess is proven. I don't know. Yeah. And that they when they made the Mormonism, they it was all kind of a farce. They like Scient- like Scientology, kinda. I don't know. I mean, that's not my right saying that. That's not my thoughts on any of this. Yeah, but it's just I seen it posted out there, and and but a lot of people backing it that this may have you know when the Mormons got out there doing some kind of rituals started causing this, this curse. Stuff. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess it could if that's tr- like let's just go out and say it's true, like what you just said. Do it, we have any Mormon listeners that could help us? Yeah, if you're out there, I don't know, and you don't, if you haven't already deleted Stop. our show <laughs> from from episode. Well, I'm sorry, history's history. I mean, we just, we I just read how it was posted. All right, we're play, we play the cards we're dealt. I never knew the Mormons and Native Americans had a lot of struggles. I didn't know, but again, I didn't. I don't know anything about Mormonism or if that, is that even the right Mormonism? No, it's uh, <laughs> Church of Latter Day Saints. Yeah. Okay. Again, no idea. So I don't mean to be offensive if I am, but... I got yelled at for fishing in one of their parking lots one time. <sighs> you mean person. Well, I thought it was, like, a Baptist church. Yeah. And normally you can park in Baptist churches. Or yeah. Something. They don't... They're cool. It look like a Baptist building. Yeah. And uh, it was not. Huh. You can't even park in the church parking no. lot? No. Wow. All right. Then why can they show up on your doorstep and bother you all the time? Oh, man. My grandma used to... If you can't even park them inside the house for hours, and you can't even park in their parking lot, something's not right here. Ah, see, I'm now I'm against this. I don't, I don't, I don't think the Mormons had anything to do with this. I just seen that. Probably not. (laughs) I would doubt it, but again, I don't know. Here's one for you. My next one: crazy cave critters. Ooh, it's like we talked about whatever episode it was. Uh, The Uintubation caves are. Very understudied and underdocumented mm-hmm. due to the deadly gases and waterlogness of them. Right. Uh, there are some, I found, a, like, there's just not much on the caves there. There's a couple real rough maps. It's with probably a lot of estimations. Probably because U.S. government's inhabiting them all. Yeah, because probably because there's all metal tubes under there and their right. experiments get out. Exactly. But no, so all these weird phenomena from the odd looking Bigfoots to the pale crawlers to the, what we call skinwalkers. Yeah. Is actually creatures either living in the cave systems coming out, Dover Demon style, or it's government experiments in the caves getting out. Van Meter Visitor style. How was the Van Meter Visitor government experiment? Well, I meant more of a cave coming out of the cave. Oh, I was like... Shoot, it could have been. Who knows? I don't get that one. I'm not saying... Just because it was really old. Or uh, the guy, or the sloth that got hit in the face with a shovel. <laughs> Still get comments about that. That's an old. That was an oldie. That's a good throwback. That's when we first started YouTube. Yeah. No, I don't know. Cave critters. Where would you go? I. It could be a slice of the pie. Just a little sliver, maybe. Like you know, if you're on a diet, and you just want to take, you want to taste the pie, but you don't want to, you know, overindulge. You just get yourself a little sliver. About two forks fulls worth. That's what this one is. So I'm so I'm so dumb. I'm just so dumb. Hope you guys are enjoying the season finale. Yeah, I hope so. If you stuck around this long, I don't know if anybody listens to these or not. <laughs> uh, hell is my next one. This is hell. This is literally hell embodied on Earth. Hell, or the scar? The land is so scarred from all the bloodshed we talked about in episode one. Is that, that why this it- is like you know the like some of the other areas on Earth that have. Constant, constant bloodshed that just the earth kind of gets scarred or poisoned, and actual hell on earth starts forming. Like on Little Nicky. Sure. <laughs> sure. Literally the same thing. Literally, exactly. That was a, yeah. No, but th- there was so much death in that first episode we did. Yeah. So much torture, so much just bloodshed for bloodshed's sake. That I wonder if that actually scarred the land, and the quote unquote. Path of the Skinwalker was nothing more than a legend. A byproduct of this. And the land itself was just turned turned bad. Turned sour. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pet cemetery rules. Right, yeah. Yeah, it, so much trauma could have happened here that it... It literally... Worn, started, worn the veil thin. That or... We talk about that 
that human emotion can affect reality. Yes, it and does. This so you know so many years of pure right. chaos and death, you know everything from rape to kids getting their heads bashed into all this Gosh, hundreds yeah. thousands. Yeah, that it really just turned the land, and we're dealing with the consequences now. Mm-hmm. The earth healing itself. It's not healing; it's festering. Well, you know, sometimes you got to fester to heal. I you got to purge the. I don't think all the Native Americans out there with cancer are going to heal the earth. No, the earth's healing itself by, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I I don't know by festering the wound first. No, I don't know. So I I kind of really think that that may be a chunk of it is literally the human psyche of so many people dying and being raped and hor- you know all this yeah. horrible stuff happening out there. The and horrible. It, and that's kind of why it's just all like, – there's nothing out there. Salt Lake mm-hmm. City is the nearest big thing. After that, there's nothing. And that's protected by Mormons, so they're safe. So I, I really wonder if that's – if it literally became hell on earth. Maybe uh, maybe not literally, but – in a, what Did you was... not hear the last six hours of stories I've read to you? Yeah, but I, I, don't, I don't think actual hell exists on earth. I think it's more like a – personification okay so i, I I'll, I'll take the personification of hell interesting interesting rebuttal yes he is very intelligent all right i got two more for you but we're gonna take our break because this will probably be about an hour episode okay i want to be right back and i won't forget to turn back on the finale thing again Is the corn podcast and you went to basin hour nine season four finale episode five of said finale <laughs> part two of episode five yes break it down even more yeah um so i know i already kind of talked about human harvest but maybe actual government human harvesting yeah uh specifically i don't know if you know this little factoid and I may be wrong, but I looked it up several times before we did this episode and everything. I, I found several conflicting sources. Okay. But do you know the number one underreported group of people for going missing in the U.S.? Native Americans. It is. Black people are number two. Hmm. Just so. I mean, it's minority communities is what, you yeah. know. But Native Americans are number one. Right. Uh, they have the most underreporting and underinvestigation of missing people. Wow. Uh, here in a minute, I'll uh, I'll pause the thing and we'll talk about something because I got to pull something up on the computer. Uh, but yeah, human harvest and testing because uh, Native Americans don't go, don't get reported missing, or if they do, it seems like nobody quote unquote nobody cares, as in organizations of government right. and stuff like that. They're not sending out the families search care, party. yeah, People right. People care, but we're talking that you know funded government organizations don't seem to care. No, uh, they don't care about people. So I'll read you a story. So before that, so what do you think about this? And I'm not saying just Native Americans are going missing in the area. The whole area is very underfunded and poor, right? Uh, so what if it's the whole area has an absolute dreadful amount of people going missing? Which is my twist, and we're going to go over some of the people. Oh, this is the twist. We're getting into the twist. Ooh, all right. Um. No. Uh. Well, I think yes. With like the cattle mutilations and things like that, human harvesting, sure. Like missing four one one people going missing, you know, just vanishing. Uh, Boulder fields. Yes. Which wonder how that ties in. I'm just still... it's, it's how the government closes doors. Like uh, it's like a door. That's the easiest. They have one factory that makes them in China. Puts it in, and it looks like a boulder. Put like a big rock have on to it. put the entrances in boulder fields. So yeah, it's just dry, that it disguises it. Mm-hmm. It's like the key, you know, the fake rock key. Yes. It's like that, but a, a door. Just put a big rock on it. Makes sense. Only Bigfoot can open it. No, it's it's not a real rock. Oh, it's like big styrofoam. It's like, yeah, it's like printed. <laughs> That's a genius idea, I guess. It's the same company that makes the key one. Oh, okay. It's a bigger version. Only the government can afford it. Mm-hmm. Government contracted. 
Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think uh, it's happening. I think that's what they abduct some of the abduction stuff that's happening. Like a sliver of that is collecting things from us human beings, biology, whatever it is that they're collecting. We don't know, but yeah, I think it's part of it. So I do want to. I want to talk about one boy in particular, and then hundreds of weird disappearances. Okay, we're gonna uh, go over all of them. We're going to, I want to say some names of some people. Yeah. Because I think it's very prominent to go over. Uh, these aren't people that, some of them are sick, sure. You know, mentally sick or, you know, whatever. Okay. They go missing. Uh, most of these are families, you know, caretakers, providers that were in normal situations that walked into the desert. Hmm. No Just, joke. I'm not joking. And never came back? Yeah. Like it's something drew them in. Uh, okay. So, like the voices we kept hearing? Like, hey, hey, I'm out here. But maybe even on a more magnetic level. Ah, oh, like homing pigeons. So I'm not, it's, it's happened a lot more. This is the last thing I found in my research that people just, like all these people, these locals, you know, these family people, these, you know, kids and dads and moms. Yeah. Just snap, turn and walk into the desert. It's like a big magnet. It's a hunting. Uh, so let's talk about the disappearance of Garrett Bradsley. Okay. Around 8 a.m. on Friday morning on August 20th, 2004, 12-year-old Garrett and his father, Kevin, got up early on a Boy Scout camping trip. They headed down to the nearby lake in the Uinta Mountains in Utah to do some fishing. The father and son lived in Elk Ridge, and they were camping in their, with their 18 other scouts and six to seven other adults, and they were planning to leave that Sunday. Garrett managed to get his shoes, pants, and socks soaked in the water while fishing with his father, and he told his dad he wanted to walk back to camp and change because he felt uncomfortable wearing the wet clothes. He told his father he wouldn't be long and would soon be back to the lake to try and land a fish for breakfast. The rest of the Boy Scouts were camped up at the hill on ca or in cabin campsite number four, uh, just about 150 feet away. Okay. This is no distance. No. I'll make that very clear. He is an eye shot the entire time. 150 feet's not that far. What is that, a football field? No, like uh, a uh, football field's 300. 300, so half, half a football field. Yeah. He then walked the trail. They, they, they had walked the trail several times before. So Kevin led his son back to the camp while he continued to fish. He thought it was no big deal. Just in case, Kevin kept his eyes on his son the entire time walking around the lake and he even shouted at him directions reminding Garrett that the path would lead him straight back to camp. He's seen his, he's seen his son make it all the way back to the camp. Then after 20 minutes, Kevin wondered why it was taking his son so long to return. He returned to camp to see what would happen. Garrett was nowhere to be seen. None of the other boys or scout leaders had seen him make it to camp. Mm. A huge search party with hundreds, if not thousands, of officers and unofficial searchers turned up, and they searched and searched in nothing apart from one of Garrett's socks. That's weird. The ice fishing pole he was carrying was never located. What happened to Garrett? Did he get lost, abducted, animal attack, or something more mysterious? This is a real kid. Yeah. And I when I that's why I want to make the point when they, we start reading these names here in a minute and talk about their disappearances. Real people. They're real people that his dad never let him out of his sight. Right. He, the only time he couldn't see him, and I've watched some videos on it, was there was like a wall of the cabin and he walked around. There was other people outside. Nothing. Hmm. There was mere probably feet. Yeah. Of just non visibility. Yeah. And get snatched, gone. One sock. Which is weird. A sock, not a shoe. No, right. That means a sock had to fall off the foot, but the shoe didn't. At least not found. Or, yeah. Hundreds, if not thousands, of people out there tearing this forest apart. Right, yeah. And they find a sock and not a shoe. Mm -hmm. Come on. So it's just the missing four and one. And I, we're going to take a pause, but uh, I do want to say, his sock was found, I kid you not, in the middle of the local boulder, uh, boulder field. Oh, wow. Coincidence? I think mm -hmm. not. Uh, his dad, uh, I don't think his dad did it personally. It's just something I believe. Right. Uh, but obviously he was suspect number one, and he never got he never got found guilty of anything. Yeah. I mean, that's, you got to... 
I mean, the, the first only, person you got to suspect is the last people that have seen him, so it's normal. It got ruled as an animal attack, hmm. even though they never found a body or blood or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, there are grizzly bears and mountain lions in the area. Yeah, but still, I think if there was a grizzly bear that close to camp, somebody would have seen something. And they, they think that his body's probably stashed in a cave. Yeah. I mean, if it was... From a bear. If a bear got him, yeah. Right. If a bear got him, for sure. I don't think a bear got him. No, I don't think so either, because I just think any anyone, at least one person would have heard a bear, a grizzly bear, like crunching through the woods or anywhere near camp, 150 feet away, a grizzly, you should be able to hear that or see it. I, I mean, they can be quiet, I and mean, they are predators, don't forget. Yeah. That. I mean, they are big, they can be big, lumbering animals, but they can also, I've seen them chase down an elk. It, right, yeah. So, I don't know. I don't think it was a bear. Uh, I'm going to pause real quick so we can get the, the thing pulled up. All and right. We'll go from there. And we're back. Uh, remember the warning I just gave you? This gets really sad. Uh, tons of people. It, it seems to be two major groups of people. And I guess it would kind of make sense for missing people. Keep in mind, there's not a lot of people out here. Right, yeah. Very small population. A lot of young people go missing. Yeah. Whether, you know, there are a lot of women, young women and girls and stuff are targeted by any, you know, all kinds of hor- horrible, horrible things. Uh, and then a lot of damaged people. Okay. Now, by damaged, uh, what I mean is whether it may be uh, a mental health issue, but a lot of people that have recently been in car wrecks, a lot of people that had uh, recently, like, broken an arm, like, it's just, it's just a weird pattern I noticed. Okay. Like day before man breaks arm, and, and then he gets, and then he walks off into the missing. desert. Yeah, hmm. it's just I don't know if it plays under the factor like they're weakened, in sense uh, as far as a predator goes. Yeah, whatever this phenomenon is, is definitely very predatory in oh, nature. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Kaylin Lee Birch, uh, she went missing in uh, January nineteenth, two thousand and twenty three. Um, tattoos on her arm. She was with her mom before she went missing. Uh, and nobody can explain why. She was not one of those teenagers that was, like, talking about running away. She had a good relationship with her family. Yeah. And she just disappeared. Cadis Harris, another one. Uh, she has a scar on her left cheek. That She disappeared in 2005. Another one, just one of these kids that go missing. Uh, let's see. I, there's a whole bunch of them. I'm not going to read everybody's name, but there's hundreds of them. That's so sad, yeah. Uh, That's correct. And this is a small, like, This is not a big area. area. Uh, Jason Gordon, recently diagnosed with schizophrenia. He was carrying his backpack. Uh, he had Asian flower, or he had Asian flower type designs on his backpack. He was going to his girlfriend's house when he disappeared. Mm. I mean... If you just look at like you go into Walmart, you know, when you, after you check out, I don't know if they they still have that wall like the yeah missing. Is it just children or is it people in general? I, generally, it's children. It's yeah. just children. Which is and, and I used to think. Here's what I I used to think about the Walmart wall. Those kids that went missing in Walmart. Oh, you used to think they went missing in Walmart. It's not yeah, and so I would panic every time. Yeah, like am I going to be next? Mm-hmm. Which, I mean. I guess, yeah, it's a, it's a potential threat, but those, I mean, those pictures are, they're full. They're always full, and I'm pretty sure every Walmart, they're different, you know, or it depends on the area you're in. It's all going to be different kids. It's just kind of sad to think about how many kids are missing with no leads. Uh, next one is Dominic. He went missing in, eight, or sorry, he went missing in 2021. He had anxiety. He was seen walking near a park and was never seen again. Mm -hmm. Uh, Vern Morris. I'm sorry, I'm reading their little thing. Uh, He is a diabetic and requires insulin. He did go missing. He went missing in 2021 wearing baggy blue jeans and a black jacket. Uh, Yeah. He was just out. You know, he was outside with friends. His parents never knew really what happened to him. Yeah. Uh, But they were extremely worried, and they still are extremely worried because of his insulin dependency. Hmm. So that to me, you know, a lot you know, that doesn't scream a kid that's run away without taking right. a bunch of insulin with him. Right, yeah. You can't survive without insulin. Uh 
yeah, I'm trying to get, I had, I should, I should have highlighted some of these cause some of them had just, they just walked off. Uh, 2021, 15 year old girl, Elamore Thompson, uh, was seen hanging out with friends. She never made it back home. They think possibly she was heading towards Crosha, Arizona, but there's not a lot of information that would make people think this. You know, and this can be anything from, you know, whatever skinwalkers to alien abduction to just human, like, abduction. I, I, it could be anything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Government, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just not, not a good, not a very uh, positive thing that's happening. Uh, I, I'm gonna say on a worldwide scale. Um, Isaiah Garcia. They think he ran away from home in the midnight hours. He left his family's house, his vehicle. Uh, he left his he left his house and his family vehicle, packed his bags. His vehicle was later was recovered and sold to a new owner without the knowledge of the parents. Mm. Three months later, he's believed that Isaiah was attempting to return to the U.S. from Mexico with his girlfriend and was denied entry at the border. Uh, they're still unsure about this. Um, let's see. There's just a lot of people. I mean, this list is huge. Uh, Uinta County actually has its own missing persons page on its website. Oh, wow. The county that all this horrible stuff happens in right yeah uh but i also had some disappearances all the way back there's some 61 uh he was near a river fishing uh his name was frank johnson and he's never seen again uh i'm just going through it's just a lot of a lot of missing people he fell in the river got pulled in but it's men caves it's men women uh adults children elderly young indiscriminate it's very indiscriminate all races uh, with the heavy skew towards Native Americans, yeah, and African Americans, uh, of course, there's some code grays and stuff like that. You know, you can elderly people just, you know, getting lost, right? Kind of yeah, around here. Um, but yeah, I don't know. To me, it's just for the limited population. There is tons and tons and tons of uh, of people going missing, perfectly healthy people. Um, I, there's, I, this list the other night, I read a whole bunch. Like I said, I should have highlighted some, but it's just, it's very sad. Um, even people, uh, there's a lot of, I guess there's, Salt Lake City has a little bit of a homeless population. Yeah. I think every major city does. And which uh, a lot of them have gone missing. And yes. Oh, yeah. The people that report that are the shelters and the shelters actually put out a list about every month about people going missing. Mm-hmm. It, it, that happens a lot, and uh, you just kind of wonder, especially in these big cities, where do these people go? It's, it. So uh, Juan Deligo, he uh, did not show up for his scheduled kidney dialysis. He's not been heard from since. Uh, nobody knows what he was wearing at the time. His family seen him leave the house to go for his kidney dialysis, and he never made it. Hmm. Never made it to the appointment. Yeah. Hmm. And I don't know if anybody knows what kidney dialysis is. Uh, you will die without it very quickly. Yes, you will. Uh, so much that a three-day weekend is people people with dialysis have to plan extremely hard. Just to be in a way for three days. Yeah, three or four days. Yeah. Because uh, a lot, yeah, people I've helped take care of and know of with dialysis, you know, it's every three to four days. Some people, you know, some people that, you know, it's less, but I don't know. It's just uh, cheerleaders. Uh, her name was Nancy Wilcox. Disappeared in 1947. Uh, she was at Olympus High School. She was seen riding with a man with a yellow Volkswagen buggy near her home. Uh, was never seen again. Hmm. But no, it's a lot of women. I mean, especially the longer you go back. I don't know. It's just, at this point, I just want to say there is something truly evil out there in that desert. Yeah. Luring people. And whatever it is, it does not give people or things back. It only takes. I think it's a truly evil thing, and I will never go there. Fair enough. Uh, anything that steals, and I, I'll put the link in that for this final episode out for people, because you can go through. I think it's important to learn people's names and look at their faces and read a little bit about their families. Like, these aren't runaway kids. Right, yeah. These aren't, These are you victims. know, delinquents. These aren't, you know, drug addicts. Yeah. These are just people. And they go to, they, they're going to their 
got dialysis appointment and they never get there. Uh, and there's men in the desert that take them. Men in suits, perhaps, drinking water. Sugar water. Sugar water. I need more sugar. So I guess after all of this, what do we do? About seven hours. So no, actually about eight and a half hours. hours. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? About the you. whole you into Basin? Yeah. It's just all a hoax and none of this stuff's <laughs> written. <laughs> no, just, after all that. Yeah, it's all made up. Yep. Pretty sure that's it. That's right, Paul. No, I mean, to uh, to put my whole overview on everything, it's an odd geological area, confirmed, with a lot of nasty, scarring, traumatic history to it, with, it seems like a, a lot of enti- nah, players involved of dealing with this phenomena. Um, but you know, which one was there first and is the, is a real question, which, uh, but I think, uh, I think it's a traumatic area with whatever geological, uh, makeup is, that the area is made of makes this phenomenon possible. Um, and then on top of that, there's been beings, creatures, entities that have used that area to their advantage to further this phenomenon, but for reasons unknown, but could be, you know, for fear, for causing trauma to abduct human emotion and feelings and feed off that. But And then I think there's a government element, too, that's also doing those same exact things with these entities or beings and, uh, and uh, piggybacking off them. And, yeah. Kind of that's kind of where I fall in on it. I don't know if that really paints a clear picture, but I think the whole picture itself ain't very clear yet still. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the few of these heavy hitters we've done that I don't personally feel I have a good idea of what is happening. I, I know we can't. Uh, it, I mean, normally I have an educated guess by right. the end of these things. Uh, this is one that bothered me actually deeply doing because of that. Because of the uncertainty. All there's I know, no real answer. To there's no point there's, at. It's just evil. Whatever's right. out there is evil. Whether it's the U.S. government or demons or yes, skin, it doesn't yes. matter. It's all and evil. yes. People are going missing. Animals are. I made the joke about exploding, but but <laughs> they are. They. I mean, the dogs did explode. Yeah. Uh, but the mutilations, the the torturing of these people out here. I mean, there's thousands of hours of stuff about the Uinta Basin for not a lot of people living there. And the sheer number of missing people per capita, I'm sure, would rival the Alaskan Triangle. Ooh, that'd be a good fight. It, I mean, they have more people go missing, but they have more people. Right, exactly, yeah. And the Alaskan Triangle, if anybody hasn't looked, is almost the entire state. Uh, <laughs> it's Alaska. But I just think the ground's been poisoned from just horrific bloodshed, mm. pitting Native Americans against each other. Yeah. And then swooping in and causing, you know, the genocide after. Mm-hmm. Uh, the constant betrayal, for, I mean, from everything from after we, you give them reservations, after you make them move there, to then selling the reservations to people to put homesteads on. And then giving you the option to either... Uh, Take one of them as your wife, you get double the land. Yes, or... Forcing Native American kids into re-education schools. Gosh, it's so awful. Uh, to the demons, the little skinwalkers out there destroying people and lives. Poltergeist activity, UFOs, portals, weird men in the desert. Dragons. Uh, I forgot about the dragon there for a minute. Yeah. A literal dragon was out there in the Uinta Basin. Uh, a big one. Weird stuff. So at the end of it, I, d- I don't know. I think it's probably everything besides nuclear waste and the Mormons. <laughs> Watch it, watch it. We're completely opposite. It's all, it's the Mormons and their nuclear ways. This has all been a a hoax to deflect from their I just, nuclear experiments. I don't know. I know we have listeners in Utah, <laughs> and I know I, I've probably been yelled at for mispronouncing aiding things several <laughs> times in this episode. Duchesne. It's Duchess. <laughs> uh, I would, though, if we do have any Mormon listeners, I honestly would be very uh, interested in 
sending us information where you know we probably got it wrong with them and That'd, yeah i i always read i'll read corrections oh yeah absolutely i'm i'm actually would be looking forward to it because i want to know i mean there might be some pieces that we're missing that can help i don't know add some more uh i don't know ingredients to the to the pie so you know my final thoughts you went to basin is a deeply troubled bad area don't go there don't go there. And the people living there have a, have a hard time, not even just dealing with the paranormal, yeah. but life. Right, yeah. Uh, thank you all for supporting us on this journey. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I know we kind of got a split population in the show, listeners, of people that really enjoy these super hardcore deep dives. Yeah. And like I said, I left stuff out. I left a lot of stuff out. I mean, we could spend hours on just one of these subjects that we covered in, you know, the, the eight and a half hours we did. Right, yeah. We could, you know, spend a whole day on just, you know, just the UFO sightings. In Vernal, in, in one city, one town in the middle of Uinta Basin, we could spend probably 10 hours talking about all the UFO sightings. Shoot, and don't even get me started on Duchesne County, how much we could do. I don't know what Duchesne County is. There's <laughs> Dutchess County. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's just it's one of those things. But thank you all for sticking along. Thank you guys for making us the season four. You yeah. Guys support. Uh, the season five opener will be whatever the next Monday scheduled after this will be. Don't know. Uh, everybody check out Flavors of the Forest. Yep. they got amazing spices and seasonings. Raw garlic dust and spicy raw garlic dust made from 100% pure um, freeze-dried garlic. Also, we have the paid members content. Uh, we haven't mentioned that in probably two or three weeks. We have Patreon and or the member space. You don't have you don't need to get them both. They're both exactly the same. You get the same perks, the same episodes. Yes. Just one or the other. Yes. Member space basically cuts out the middleman for us and bypasses any problems people have been having with Patreon and their services. So but Patreon does upload the episodes automatically to Spotify once you sign in. Right, exactly. So, so that, there is benefits to either. Cor- correct. Uh, also, check out merch. We have the Uinta Basin t-shirt. It's been on sale the whole time during this. Woohoo! Uh, and also, keep the eye out for the Season 5 opener. There's a t-shirt coming out with it. Oh, exciting. Me and Jay are both on the cover. Uh-oh. Uh, wielding some guns, fighting the, the paranormal. Oh, boy. I have not even seen this yet. I have been the great and powerful Mr. E. And I've been J Clone 5. Beep, boop, beep, boop. Meep, we'll boop, catch mop, you meep, meep, next season <laughs> with so much more exciting, fun, paranormal, and educational stuff. That's right. <gasps> Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Crips of the Corn podcast. Please share with a friend you think would like us. It's the best way to help our show grow. Leave a comment, rate us, a five star review. And remember, there is always extra content on Patreon slash CryptoTheCorn.com. And don't forget, stay magical.